Hello, everybody. Make sure my sound is working. Hello, happy Friday, everybody. Hello, today we're going to be uh, still painting on the lamppost art quilt. I hope you hang out with me for a little while. I figure we'll spend about an hour working on this quilt top today. Hello, everybody. If you've been following along uh, with my channel, maybe you noticed I posted the fabric version of this quilt top shortly before going live today. You can kind of see it right there on the wall behind me. It's gorgeous. You can find that video here on my channel. Y'all, this is a free quilt pattern, so I hope that you are inspired and you join along. Hello, everybody. Janice says, are you going to only do the paint quilts? I'm not interested in that. Well, Janice, I have lots and lots of fabric quilts videos here on my channel. Right now, we are doing painted quilts. Uh, we're doing art quilts, we're doing smaller quilts, but if painting is not your thing, go check out my channel because I just did this quilt in fabric. So maybe that's more suited for you and you might be inspired by that, so you can go check that out. Hello, everybody. Thank you to my moderators, Miss Sylvia, Miss Dari. Hello, everybody. Yes. Okay. So yeah, I just uploaded the fabric version of this quilt. If painting's not your thing, go check that out. Uh, tonight, y'all see the little announcement? We're going to do a paint party Zoom on Creative Crew, 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. It might be snowing by then here where I am. And uh, my goal is to get all of the outside pieces painted by next week. Next week, we're going to paint the very center portion of this quilt, the circle and the lamppost. That portion, we're going to paint next week. And then the week after that, we're going to put this underneath the needle of the sewing machine, and we're going to start quilting. So that's kind of the lineup of progression for this quilt in the next couple weeks. Ooh, Michelle the Quilter, thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Hazel said it, it's miserable where she is. It's so cold. <laughs> All right, before we get started, uh, hold on one second. Let me just answer this message. All right, sorry, my phone is blowing up, y'all. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, before we get started, Sorry, I get so like squirrel. <laughs> uh, before the live started, there was some chatting uh, from everybody and Miss Cheryl asked a couple questions. And I just want to answer those questions uh, before we get started. Cheryl had asked, and I'm just scrolling through, can you use a dry erase marker for the outline? Miss Cheryl, I'm not, because I did two versions of the quilt, right? We're doing the painted version and then I just posted the video for the fabric version. Uh, for the fabric version, if you don't have a chalk marker and you're using a dark background, use a little sliver of white soap. That might mark your fabric for the little placement marks, right? Um, if you're doing the painted version and you're wondering about the dry erase marker to do the black lines, uh, I don't know, quite honestly, if that would work or not. I've never tried it. Uh, you could always try and see if it works. Uh, my guess is that this quilt for you will never get washed. It's an art quilt. So if it works, I don't see why it, you couldn't use that. Um, and I'm always one of those out of the box kind of creators anyway. So if something works, why not use it? So give it a try and see if it works. Um, and then she also asked if she could use Wonder Under uh, instead of Heat and Bond Light. For the fabric version, I'm assuming, and the answer is yes. You're not limited to Heat and Bond products. That's just what I have. I have a whole bolt of it, and I really like it. But um, if you have a different fusible product you like using, absolutely. It works the same way. <clears throat> All right. I think that's everything. Paint Party Zoom fabric version video 
Today we're painting uh, some more of the outside. Yes, that's everything. I think that's everything. I'm going to switch you over to the cutting mat. And I'm going to scoot in my quilt. You'll see, <coughs> pardon me, since last week, we painted this in this portion, right? Oh, and we also painted this little orange piece. Since then, uh, I went ahead and painted a little bit more, and there's a little section of red down here that I got. Uh, we're going to be working on a couple of these pieces together. We'll spend about an hour together, I think. And um, between today's video and next week's video, I'm going to paint in all of the surrounding pieces uh, so we can move along in this quilt. <laughs> I'm hoping to get that done on the paint party zoom this evening. Let me rearrange a little bit. There we go. Yes, by all means, if painting on fabric is not your thing, try doing this quilt in fabric. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. And I did want to say, if, uh, if you've already purchased the SVG file, here's what it looked like. I sent you an email yesterday with an updated SVG file that separates this whole section into four individual parts. So if you've already purchased the SVG to cut this out with a cutting machine, go check your email. I've updated the listing now, so if you were to buy it now, it's already broken down into four pieces. But if you've purchased it prior to today, I've emailed you the updated SVG. Uh, yeah, I was having a little bit of trouble yesterday cutting this out of fabric uh, because the cutter cuts this whole shape out first and kind of separates it from the base of your fabric, right? And then it did not want to stay on the mat. So I broke it down. Check your email if you've already uh, purchased that because you have a new SVG waiting for you. <laughs> Whew, that felt like a lot. Okay, and one thing that I wanted to show you uh, before I actually mix up some paint for today. Um, we have lots of black lines in this quilt as well. And uh, if you're like me and you struggle getting exactly straight, perfect black lines, my suggestion would be paint in your black lines. If they're wobbly and unstraight, just paint them in. And then paint in your uh, bigger pieces of your quilt. And what the paint does is actually seals that fabric. If you mark with a fabric marker on plain unsealed fabric, what tends to happen is that that line grows, right? You could go faster and it doesn't grow quite, it doesn't spread out as much. But if you keep the pin on your fabric. Look how that expands. That's why I struggle marking with fabric markers on unsealed fabric. See that? And my tracing ability is just not that fast. So when I trace, my lines end up looking fuzzy and expanded, right? But once you've sealed that fabric with paint, now you can go back and touch up your black lines without them growing. So I just like to use like a straight edge from an index card or anything that gives you a straight firm edge. And then once it's painted and it's dry, then you can come back and you can touch up these lines and make them nice and exact. And you don't have to worry about the pin expanding and growing. See that? Nice, clean, straight line. So I do plan on going back and touching up any of the lines where I've painted into the black or my black line was just not exactly straight. I will end up going back and doing that. <clears throat> Ooh, I hope y'all are doing good today. Let's see. I'm just going to take a quick look at our pattern here. 
my quilt is actually orientated like that on the mat. So I know that I want to do a green and a blue, a blue and a yellow, maybe orange. We'll see. So let's just go ahead and start mixing up some paint here. Are there other markers you can use if you can't find the friction ones? Um, let me think. If you can't find the friction ones and you're not able to order on Amazon, that's where I got mine. The friction ones you can also find at Walmart, Joann's Hobby Lobby might have them. Uh, office supply stores might carry them as well. They're intended for fabric, but I mean for paper, but quilters use them because when heated up, they do disappear. You might also want to check out these Abadi fabric erase pens. Those work really well. Um, I'm trying to think. For this version, for this particular quilt, you could possibly use a pencil or a ballpoint pen if you're doing the quilt as one great big piece. And the reason I say that is because you could paint over the pencil or the black lines and cover them up, right? If you were piecing this the way that we did the previous quilt where we're sewing everything together, then perhaps those lines might not go away uh, in your seam allowances. But if you're doing the quilt as one great big piece and you're just struggling trying to figure out a way to get the pattern on your fabric, I don't see why a pencil wouldn't work. You're gonna paint over the lines. <clears throat> Pamela, that's funny. She says she's been watching the videos so much that her husband's like, who are you talking to? All right, green paint. Let's get some green paint mixed up here. Just gonna mix a little bit. And I'm gonna mix in some fabric medium in that. A little bit and we're gonna stir that up stir 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 we're just stirring until all of the color comes back and it's uniform Miss Cheryl you might have stepped away for a second, but I just uh, talked about the dry erase markers. Uh, you might want to test them out. If they work for you, fantastic. Uh, but you could always test them out and see. I can't say 100% because I've never used dry erase markers on fabric. All right. Just giving that a good stir. If by chance you're mixing your paint and your fabric medium and you go to paint on your fabric and the color starts running or bleeding, uh, chances are you've mixed too much fabric medium in that and it's way too thin. Uh, try adding some more paint to thicken it up. Really. If you look at the back of your fabric medium, it's gonna tell you the correct mixing ratio, ratio for that specific fabric medium. And I would try to follow that. All right, now we can start painting. <laughs> Uh, Cheryl said, could you use something else if you can't find the medium? Uh, I'm not 
not sure where you live, Cheryl. Remind me again where you live. I mean, you don't have to type your address in. But if you're here in the States, if you can find a Walmart, they have fabric medium. It may not be the specific brand that I'm using, but they do have a fabric medium. Uh, and I don't know if you're able to order online or not. If you are, that would make life so much easier. Uh, I've posted links to the fabric medium, I believe down in the description box, and you could just go online and have it delivered to your house. That's not possible for everybody, and, and I understand that. Uh, but if ordering online is an option for you, and you cannot find it locally, you might wanna try ordering online. Now let's say you cannot order products online and there's no store near you that carries it. <sighs> what else could you use? I'm gonna say this unofficially because I've only tried it out a little bit. Fabric softener. Uh, because the, the nature of this quilt is an art quilt. Uh, I don't ever intend on putting this quilt through the washer or the dryer. But when I was painting the seahorse quilt, I happened to come across some videos on TikTok. And they were using fabric, liquid fabric softener as a fabric medium. And I was like, that is so cool. Let me try it. And it worked wonderfully. And after you heat set it, it was nice and soft. Not to mention, it smells up your craft room so nice. <laughs> and it works the same way. You mix just a little bit in with your paint. And what it does is it softens up your paint so that down the road you could stitch on your paint and not worry about the tooth of the paint breaking your thread. Uh, and the overall nature feeling of the quilt is softer. Now I did do a little bit of experimenting but I'd like to experiment more. I used some fabric softener and some paint and I washed it and it did fade quite a bit. So that's why I say fabric softener unofficially. I still wanna do some testing because when I washed it, I used warm water in the wash. I'd like to try and use cold water and see if it doesn't fade. So that's something that I wanna do more testing on but chances are you can find some fabric softener and give that a try. Hazel, you're so sweet. So, yeah. Uh, and I'll say this too, right? If you don't want to use a fabric softener and you can't find a fabric medium anywhere, I reckon you could paint the acrylic paint right on the fabric. My only thought process on that and why I wouldn't do that if you could find something to mix in your paint. Acrylic paint can be a little rough, right? And when it dries, even though we're painting it into the fibers of the fabric, I don't know if down the road, if it wouldn't crack or any paint that didn't soak in might peel off. I don't know these things. Uh, and I think this is a lot of work to invest in a project to have something happen down the road. And the fabric medium does soften this paint up. You notice it mainly after you heat set your quilt, 
right? When it's all done and you heat set it, it does soften it up and smooth it. I don't know that that would happen if you just use the straight paint. I don't know. One thing I'll say over and over again is I don't have all the answers <laughs> for sure. And I don't mind saying that. One thing I will say, right, is I don't think you should ever be afraid to try all these different things out. Like, if you can't get fabric medium nowhere, try painting right on the fabric. Do some experiments. It's time that you're spending, but experimenting is well worth the time invested to figure out how you're going to approach a project, right? And if it's going to work or not. I can tell I didn't quite add enough fabric medium to this. It's a little thick, but that's all right. And this little brush, it takes a while to paint in an area. <laughs> but that's my trusty brush. It's still going strong. Every once in a while, I see a little hair in the paint I have to pick out. Y'all are so sweet. Y'all are so nice. Miss Sheila, are you going to hunker down? Who knows what this weather is going to do? We might get snow. We might not. We might get one inch of snow. We might get a foot of snow. You never know. Yeah, uh, paint party Zoom tonight, 8.30 Eastern Standard Time if you're on Creative Crew. Even if you're not doing this quilt, even if you're not painting your quilt, maybe you're doing it with fabric. Uh, maybe you're not doing this quilt at all and you just want to come hang out with everybody, please join us. I'll post a link at 8.30. That green is not showing at all this white blows the exposure of the camera, y'all. That is not as pretty as the green I see, just so you know. But yeah, come join us this evening. Even if you're not making this quilt at all. Let's see, I want some blue paint. <laughs> y'all are so nice. All right, let's mix up a little bit of blue. Uh, I'll mix a little bit more than that. There we go. And I really, <laughs> I really should be doing it like that because I make a mess and I don't want to get any paint anywhere else. All right. Let's mix that up. Oh yeah, Jeannie said she's gonna sew while I'm painting, good. How do you do the shading along the sign sides? Ooh, Joyce. I think this blue here, I'm not gonna do any shading, but hold on a second, because this blue, I am. We'll do that first. Sheila, we're ready. We have supplies to make some snow cream, <laughs> which we had some last weekend. But can you ever really have enough? Not really. So, yeah, we're all set. Jeannie, I know you're not a painter. Did you see the fabric version, though? I know you can't see it up here in the little right there. I just posted that video. You might want to check it out. The fabric version is so pretty and I used purple fabrics for that one. 
I'm super stoked. Now I did not get to quilting it in the video because I know Miss Pat, she's been waiting for that video and a couple others. And I didn't want them to be waiting forever. So I haven't quilted that quilt yet. It's just pinned, the top is pinned to the wall. Uh, so it's not quilted yet, but the top is done. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to commit on how I want to quilt that particular quilt. There's like a million different things you could do with it, right? I'm trying to commit on how I'm gonna quilt it. Stir, stir, stir. Ooh, I did not see the snow cream on TikTok. Ooh, I'm gonna search that up. You know, I love some TikTok. <laughs> Snow cream. It's the best ever ice cream you'll ever eat. Ever. So I'm hoping we get at least enough snow to do that. Beverly, you made it for the live. Yay. Oh my gosh, Joyce, you made the lemon bars. <laughs> Those are so dang good. Oh my glory. <clears throat> Janet, yes, go watch that painted version. Oh, I'm getting paint everywhere, y'all. I don't want to get this on my quilt. <laughs> I'm a messy painter. All right, there we go. Snow cream. Yes, you eat it. It's ice cream made with snow. All right, Miss Joyce, we're going to do, we're going to work on, you know what? Let's work on this one because it's smaller and it'll go faster. Uh, and let me show you a little bit of the blending and the shading. Ooh, Sheila, you just sent me the TikTok. Thank you. I saw it pop up on my screen. Let's move down to this bottom corner here and we'll work on this one because I'll shade this one a little bit too. Now there's no, uh, I'm gonna shade mine with green like I did this top one, right? The one over in the other corner I shaded with black. So depending on the color you mix in, you're gonna get different results, but I kind of really like the, the green with the blue. Again, I know you're not gonna see it uh, the way it looks in real life. What I see and what you see is completely different. Uh, but it's gorgeous with the green. So because I already have some green mixed up, I'm going to use green again down in this corner. If you mix red with it, you'll get a purple. Uh, if you mix black with it, you'll just get a darker blue, grayish, blackish color. Uh, so keep that in mind. <clears throat> Sylvia said, just don't eat the yellow snow. Yes, glory, no. All right, so let's start. I'm just going to start by painting this whole piece in with some blue. And at this point, because I showed you how to clean up the black lines after everything's dry, I'm not really worried if I go into the black. I'm just getting some color and sealing in this fabric a little bit. If I used a bigger brush, it would go quicker. Yes. Okay, here's a question for y'all. Because we've been talking about this a little bit on the Creative Crew, but uh, Mid-Atlantic Quilt Festival at the end of February. 
Who plans on going? Anybody? Before we moved to this house, the Mid-Atlantic Quilt Festival was about five minutes from my previous house. I went every single day. <laughs> when I lived that close, I went every single day. Uh, now we live about 35 minutes, well, depending on traffic, maybe 25 to 35 minutes away. So I'm only going one day this year. Uh, and plus, I'm so incredibly busy that I don't see myself going back day after day. Before, it was right up the street. I could go in for a little while and then go back to work, right? It's more of a process now that we've moved. So I'm only going one day. There we go. We've got some blue in, and it's still a little wet. Joyce, you're going. Yay. All right, Miss Beverly, we'll see you tonight on the Zoom. I plan on going on the 24th. So uh, if you're making plans and trying to decide which day you want to go, all right, look, I still have blue on my paintbrush. And I just picked up a little bit of green. Uh, if you're trying to make your plans and at all possible, if you can go on the 24th, I'd love to see you. I'd love to meet up. I'm hoping that they're doing the buffet lunch upstairs at the convention center. If so, we could all have lunch together. That would be awesome. Look, I'm just putting some of the green paint right on top of that blue. I think because of the light, it it's putting a little reflection a little bit. And again, you don't see what I see, but I think you can see it good enough, right? I'm just pulling in some of the green. Again, we're trying to keep these paints flat. Uh, I'm smoothing it out and not trying to build up a lot of paint on the fabric. I'm trying to keep it super thin but I'm just adding to it. And just working with it while it's still wet. Now that fabric wants to soak in the paint, right? So it's not quite like painting on a canvas where you have some real blending time and you can really move those paints around. The fabric soaks it soaks up that color, but you can blend out a little bit. Not quite as good as painting on a canvas. And you know what? I like that, so I'm gonna stop. Sometimes I have a tendency to over-process things. And let me see if I can hold this up in a way that you can see it a little bit better. You still don't see it the way that I do. I'm looking at my computer screen. But you get the idea, right? All right, let's go in with some blue and we'll do this little section here. That green is still wet, so I'm gonna try to be careful not to put my hand in it. What's really interesting about this specific brand of paints is that every once in a while, and I know you don't see it. Oh, see that little dark mark right there? You can just see it. 
Up close, it's purple. Which leads me to think that these paints, the pigments, the color pigments that make up this blue, maybe there was some red pigment in this paint that did not get mixed up. I noticed it when I was painting last week too. Every once in a while, I get a stroke of purple and I have not painted purple paint with this brush in quite some time. So I know it's not purple in my brush. It's in the paint. That's interesting. All right, so we've got some blue paint right in that section. That's pretty, I'm gonna leave that alone. And we're doing blue here. Are you adding, are you adding shimmer paints when you do the dragonfly? Oh, you mean the hummingbird? The next quilt we're doing? I don't know, let me ask y'all something. I'm so torn. I'm really torn after I made the fabric version this week of the lamp post. I love, not everybody loves painting. I love it. I love it so much and I find it therapeutic. Like this is my relaxing time when I'm doing this. The fabric version was a lot of fun too. And so while I was making that fabric version this week, I was like, oh goodness, should, should I do that one painted or should I do it in fabric? I do know I've only got time to make one version of the hummingbird. So it's either for me, painted or fabric. There's no time to make both. So what do y'all think? The hummingbird, should we do that in fabric or paint? Maybe I'll let y'all decide. You could do it either way. Just to let you know, the hummingbird has a lot more smaller pieces, so it might actually be easier to paint it. Not gonna lie. It would be faster and quicker to paint it. But I do think it would be gorgeous in fabric. What do you think? Painted fabric. Yeah, Sylvia, you can you you could do it either way, right? Uh absolutely. Painting fabric. Oh, it's mixed 50-50 right now, y'all. <laughs> I don't know. One of the things I try to do on my channel, y'all, and I know the painting thing is, is not everybody's cup of tea. One thing for sure, if we all thought the same way if we all liked the same stuff, if we all only did the same things, wouldn't this world be boring? It would be so boring if we all thought and did the same exact thing. But one of the things that is like a goal for me here on my channel is to inspire you to try new things, right? And because this year, I don't plan on doing any large quilts. Here on my channel we're gonna do smaller projects y'all there's not a short a shortage of block of the months or new patterns coming out by all these wonderful designers where if you want to do a big quilt the possibilities are endless on finding a pattern to do right so um, I don't feel like here on my channel we're st stuck only doing large quilts Chances are you're probably doing at least one other large quilt, if not more, right now. I really like doing these smaller quilts because we can knock them out faster and move on to doing another smaller quilt. And these smaller quilts are perfect for when you're doing a large quilt and you just need a break from it 
and you just need to do something else for a day, right? So the smaller quilts, whether they're painted or they're done in fabric, are really what my focus is gonna be for this year. And to be really honest, other than the hummingbird, I've got the pattern designed. Uh, after that, I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> and I haven't planned out the content for the hummingbird quilt either. I just know that that's what we're doing next. <laughs> All right, old trusty brush. I'm going to have to put you in the water. We're going to use a bigger brush because this is just taking forever. But the bigger brush I have is not much bigger. Hold on a second. There we go. This one's a little bit bigger. All right, this should go a little bit faster. <laughs> we'll move things along a little bit. There we go. Glory day. That little brush is my favorite, but it's it's little. <laughs> Using that brush, we'd be here till April painting this quilt, I do think. Ooh, so what are your plans for this weekend? Some of y'all are just going to stay in because of the weather. I have a quilt uh, for Miss Kathy. I'm painting to, uh, quilting tomorrow. That's going to be fun. Y'all, it is the coolest quilt. It's so pretty. So I'm quilting that tomorrow for her. And, uh... This afternoon, I get to do a really cool sublimation project. I'm kind of really uh, excited to do this one because it's of drawings of birds. I cannot wait to see how those turn out. They're going to look really good. So that's this afternoon. Paint party zoom tonight. What else? You'll see, even though uh, this bigger brush is really putting down the paint, I'm making sure there's no rolls and thick paint. Is that like, uh, hold on a second, y'all. There, maybe it'll stop doing the autofocus. <laughs> That's annoying. I thought I had already turned that off. Okay, maybe it'll stop autofocusing. That's hard to watch when it does that. Let's see, do I have enough blue? I don't think so. <gasps> Ooh, it almost went in my green paint. It almost did. Ooh, Cheryl's going to a quilt shop to work on some projects. That's exciting. I'm just going to mix up a little bit more blue just to get us through this. Video, there we go. Uh, Sylvia, I know that's not a good time for you where you are. You'll be asleep. Vicky's staying in and snowing. Vicky, how much snow are you supposed to get up where you are? 
Janet's hemming new curtains for the weekend. Ooh, I have never made curtains. I have seen fabric that I would love to have curtains made from, but I've never made curtains. All right, mixing, mixing, mixing. There we go. All right, let's finish painting in this square. And then, you know what, we'll do something a little different with this block. All right, we've got blue paint in that whole piece. Let me bring in a little bit of red. We'll see what that does. Now here's the thing, I'm not gonna mix fabric medium in that red. You don't see anything I'm doing. <laughs> the joys of going live. I just painted in the rest of that blue. <laughs> um, I just put a little bit of red here on my canvas and I'm not going to mix fabric medium in that because I've already, you didn't see it, but I just mixed up more blue with fabric medium in it. And all of this has fabric medium in it. So I'm hoping that when I add a little bit of red, it'll mix with the blue that already has the fabric medium in it, right? And I'm just going to add some red. Ooh. It gives you the beautiful purples that I almost wanted to use. And it's a totally different shading than the green. So I'm just going to put some red right along this edge here. Like so. And then add a little bit more blue with it. That light is not showing you hardly any of it. Here in a second, I'm going to turn that light off and see if you can't see this a little bit better. Yeah, so you can just experiment mixing in different colors. If you know your color wheel and you know you're mixing colors, then you know that red and blue together make purple. But you could just uh, experiment adding all different colors and see what you get. This bigger brush certainly is faster. <laughs> I'll make sure to have that ready for tonight. All right, don't overdo it, Lisa. Let me just add a little bit more blue in here. Not trying to really get that paint thick. All right, there we go. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put that brush in the water and let that start soaking for a second so it doesn't dry up. I'm gonna turn this light off and see if you can't see that any better. Ooh, a little bit, there we go. It's a little bit better. I still don't think you see it like 100% the way I do in person, but that's a little bit better. 
So that was shading with the green, and that's shading with the red. Ooh, that's really pretty. Linda, hello. The old bird, hello. I'm so glad you joined us. How long does it take to dry? I think that varies uh, with a couple of different factors, Janet. I think it depends on how much fabric medium you mix into it to get it really juicy and, you know, and wet. <laughs> uh, and I think it depends on how, what the temperature is in your room. If it's colder in your room, it might take longer to dry. If it's really warm, if you got the heat crank in, it might dry faster. Uh, and I think it depends on how much paint you put down. If you do it really super thin, it'll dry faster. If you put quite a bit paint of paint down, it's going to take longer to dry. Ooh, Catherine's making raisin bread. Ooh. Did y'all see Harlan's bread he made on the Creative Crew the other day? It's delicious. <laughs> All right, so yeah, there you go. That's a good uh, representation of mixing some colors. This one I just left blue and I love that too. So you don't necessarily have to mix the colors in. You could just paint them solid. They would just be as pretty. The green, I just used green. So yeah, I think tonight, let me show you everything I have left to paint. With that bigger brush, I think I will get it all painted in tonight. So we have this bottom quadrant, <laughs> this bottom section left to paint and then next week we're going to paint the middle lamp post together and everything will be painted at that point and then the following week we're going to start quilting this and uh yeah since we didn't do that part together on the last quilt i thought we would quilt this together just a pre-warning though uh, a lot of the times when i'm quilting live it just doesn't seem to go very smoothly, like the thread breaks. or, And if, if I don't have the camera on, everything is 100% smooth. Every time. So, uh, but yeah, be patient with me. We're going to quilt this together. I don't know how I'm quilting this one. I really don't know. I kind of, kind of want to just... Uh, quilt around the shapes and leave the shapes alone but then I kind of want to go in and do something fun in those shapes so I don't know I cannot decide I cannot uh, commit at this point I think there's probably a hundred different things you could do right uh, but yeah we're gonna quilt it together and uh, I guess we'll see when we get to that how we're going to quilt mine. Oh, Debbie, you're going to miss tonight too. Dang. Swirls would look beautiful, right? So uh, here's the thing as we're closing out for today. And uh, you saw the fabric version behind me and the painted version. I do know that when I paint this quilted version, uh, I've learned from the last two art quilts that it really just benefits you to use black thread when quilting painted quilts like this because the needle is going to make little holes through your paint. Those holes appear dark and black. Uh, so to blend in those holes that the needle makes through the painted surface, you might as well use a black thread so that the holes don't show up as much and you just see the design of your quilting and you don't focus on the holes. So when I quilt this painted version with you, I'll be using black thread. Uh, but the fabric version 
it doesn't matter what color thread you use and you could go to town using all different colors of thread <laughs> so that should be a lot of fun hazel no kidding oh you're gonna have to send me a message and let me know what happened oh you're so welcome Yeah, I'm looking forward to quilting this, for sure. Miss Betty. Hello, Miss Betty. Did you get your new laptop? Ah, Better Days says you could quilt little lanterns inside the big spaces. I could. I could. Wow, that's sophisticated quilting. You are very ambitious. <laughs> that would be gorgeous. That might be a little out of my comfort zone. I'm going to be quilting this quilt on my Juki, my domestic sewing machine right here. Uh, yeah, the lamppost in there would be gorgeous. Maybe a little bit beyond my free motion quilting. Yeah, and absolutely, you could use a straight stitch. You don't have to do free motion work. Uh, you could use your regular standard free motion, uh, straight stitch. I do think cross hatching would be gorgeous on this quilt. It would get it quilted and it would look lovely. You could also just use a straight stitch with your regular pressing foot and go right in these black areas, quilt the quilt, give it some really nice quilted texture and leave it at that. So if free motion is not your thing and you're like, well, I don't do free motion, you don't have to. Oh, you didn't get your new laptop. Staying at home is just too, I know. It's been cold this week. I'm going to tell you that. All right, y'all. So this is where we are. Uh, and Miss Betty is, is supposed to be nasty out this weekend. So hopefully you're not out laptop shopping in bad weather. <laughs> I'm going to set this off right here. Because I'm tempted to put my hands in it and to get paint where I don't want it. Uh, so yeah. <sighs> I just want to thank y'all so much for hanging out with us. Thank you to all my moderators who help keep this uh, chat area while I'm not focused, a nice place to be, a fun place to be without any shenanigans. <laughs> and uh, I hope if anything else, if, if, if you're not doing this quilt, that you just at least come and hang out with us. Uh, we all enjoy you being here and engaging. And um, yeah, again, just reminding you, go check out the fabric version. It's so pretty. I got to use some batiks in there and uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, many of you I will see this evening, and if I don't see you, I'm going to miss you. Uh, I don't see myself going live anytime this weekend because I'm going to be sublimating and quilting, painting tonight, <laughs> and eating snow cream, hopefully. And then, uh, yeah, so I will see you next Friday. We're still painting next week, but then we're on to quilting. And um, until then... I was trying to think real quick. I didn't make any notes of what else is coming up. But gear up for the hummingbird. And also keep an eye out for the thumbnail for next month's mug rug. I'm not going to put that up quite yet. But I love it. Yay! Okay. All right, everybody. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Stay in if you can. 
If you're venturing out, be safe. Let's see, where's the button? Here we go. And until I see you next time, I hope you do something creative. You don't have to just do this quilt. Do something creative. Something that puts you in your happy zone, right? Yes. All right, I'll see y'all next Friday. Bye, everybody.